Hello wonderful viewer, this is Anton and today we're going to be trying something a little bit different. We're going to be using a game called Injustice, Gods Among Us, to talk about a pretty cool concept of Kryptonite. That's right, you heard me right, we're going to be talking about Kryptonite. Why? Well, because I've recently seen Batman vs Superman and I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but because it's Superman, we need to talk about Kryptonite. Welcome to What The Math, enjoy the video and hopefully you learn something new today. Now you may have played this game before, it's actually one of my favorite fighting games ever because here you, you play as uh, DC Comics uh, superheroes and you try to battle it out. Uh, but I'm basically going to be playing as Superman and I'm gonna try to beat the game while I'm talking about Kryptonite and uh, all we know about it. If you don't actually know what Kryptonite is in the Superman story, then you may want to stop watching this video because it will make no sense to you. I hope that you know what Kryptonite is. It's basically the Achilles heel or the weakness of Superman. And I just wanted to talk about uh, the possibility of having it in real life and also the similar element called Krypton, which is actually something that we do have in real life. And let's actually just start with the name itself and with the actual element called Krypton. Now, Krypton is a noble gas and it's, um, it's a gas that uh, is essentially not very reactive. It doesn't combine with anything. It's not reactive, meaning that uh, if you put it in any situation, it will very likely just stay as Krypton. It will not really change its uh, molecular structure. And its name, Krypton, is from Greek word Kryptos, which means hidden, because this gas was actually elusive and hidden from the scientists for a very long time until someone finally discovered it. Now, if kryptonite is made from krypton, which is possible based on the name, it means that uh, this particular gas would have to combine with uh, two uh, molecules of oxygen to become uh, kryptonite. Uh, just like nitrite or sulfide, this would have to be krypton, um, oxygen mix and this is technically impossible because like I said before it's a noble gas so it doesn't really combine with anything and as a matter of fact it was only in the 60s that scientists finally managed to combine krypton with fluorine making krypton uh, fluorine combination but this only happened in really extreme conditions under a really low temperature of minus 183 degrees celsius and um, even then this was not a very stable compound and just like other noble g gas elements, uh, such as, for example, neon or uh, xenon, uh, krypton really doesn't react at all. In the last few years, we've actually been able to kind of forcefully com uh, combine it with certain elements, but this would not really hap happen in real life, so creating kryptonites from krypton would be quite impossible. But nevertheless, uh, the gas itself is actually kind of interesting. It's uh, colorless, it's odorless, it doesn't smell, it doesn't taste. Uh, it also occurs in very, very trace amounts in atmosphere, so if you were to essentially just breathe in, you would probably be breathing in a little bit of Krypton uh, right now as well. And uh, what we usually use it for is, of course, fluorescent lamps. It's, it's a really interesting um, gas that can actually produce a pretty cool yellowish-green color if you were to put it in the light. Or in a light bulb that actually would use uh, Krypton to produce various um, lighting. It's also very useful in photography because it can produce a very, very brilliant white uh, light uh, if you were to electrify it as well. And today we also know that uh, Krypton is one of the byproducts of uranium fission uh, production so when you're actually producing uranium uh, there the, one of the end products is going to be krypton and because of this uh, krypton 85 one of the isotopes of krypton has actually been used to um, to try to detect hidden uh, nuclear facilities in North Korea and also in Pakistan uh, because uh, those facilities as they produce uranium and as they produce various weapon grade uranium and plutonium they would actually produce krypton 85 that would then be in atmosphere and you can easily detect it using some sort of a special krypton detecting machine thingy that obviously the United States has hidden so somewhere in space. So in other words, uh, detecting Krypton-85 is a pretty good way of uh, trying to find hidden nuclear weapons and hidden nuclear uh, production facilities. But nevertheless, Kryptonite and Krypton might not actually be the same sort of uh, material. As a matter of fact, it's very likely that 
the mineral kryptonite doesn't actually have any krypton in it because it will be almost impossible to produce. So let's actually talk about uh, something we get to see in one of the Super Superman movies called Superman Returns, where we actually get to read the chemical makeup of so-called kryptonite on a bottle. Or was it a bottle? I don't remember. I think it was actually uh, some sort of a stand that said that uh, this mineral contains sodium, lithium, boron, silicate, hydroxide with fluorine. Now, what this suggests is that um, kryptonite is not an actual element, but it's a mineral that is named after krypton. So this is actually related to how some minerals are named. So sometimes if you find a mineral that is located in a certain area, you will name it by adding ITE at the end. Or if it has some sort of a feature that, like for example, if it's green, you may want to name it after color. So for example, chlorite uh, is named after chlorus, which means green. And so in this case, it's actually just a material or a mixture of material that is named after Krypton the planet, where Superman and his uh, whole ancestry is from. Now here's the really interesting fact about uh, this particular mixture of elements. Sodium, lithium, boron, silicate, hydroxide has actually been discovered in 2007 in a, a Serbian mine and so we actually discovered something that has very very similar composition. The only thing that it's missing is fluorine and this actually made the news back in 2007 because people were saying oh my god we just found kryptonite. It's exactly the same composition as it was in the movie. But obviously because it's missing fluorine uh, and because it's actually white and not green, it's a little bit different from the kryptonite you expect um, from a Superman movie. But in all other respects, it's actually chemically identical to what uh, kryptonite is in uh, Superman Returns. And although it doesn't actually glow either, if you were to shine ultraviolet light on it, it would actually start uh, becoming fluorescent and would have a very interesting pinkish orange, gl orange glow to it. Oh, and by the way, if you've ever read uh, Superman comics or have watched Superman um, cartoons, you may also know that there's not just green kryptonite. Kryptonite does come in different colors and it does come in white as well. So this here might be just white kryptonite. And because this was found in a, a place called Jadar, Serbia, this uh, mineral has now been named Jadarite. So it's actually, it has a name of a place where it was found uh, that follows the same uh, naming convention as uh, kryptonite uh, when referring to Krypton the planet. And so what exactly is this new Jadarite mineral or let's just call it white kryptonite because that's much cooler. What is this white kryptonite good for? Well, it's a great source of lithium, which can obviously be used in things like batteries. Um, it's also a very good source of something called bor borate, which is often used in cleaning and produces things like borax. And there's actually quite a lot of it available in this mine. So uh, whoever wants to try to mass produce lithium or borax, uh, this is essentially where you go and find it. But I'm sure there's a lot more things that Jedirite can do uh, that we haven't discovered yet. So I'm pretty sure we're going to discover some really cool uh, new uses for it in the future. But I guess the coolest thing about the Jedirite is that it's so uh, unusually similar in composition to the Kryptonite from the uh, 2006 film Superman Returns. So is it a coincidence or was it meant to be found? Well, I guess we'll never know. But my question is this, what would actually happen if we did put fluorine in it? If we actually mix it with fluorine, would it actually turn green? Because that would be pretty awesome. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk to you about. I hope you learned a little bit more about Krypton, the gas, and also Kryptonite, the mineral, both imaginary from Superman comics and also the real version called Jadarite that we've discovered in 2007. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, don't forget to share it, and subscribe if you still haven't. And also leave a comment below, let me know what you think about this type of video. Did you enjoy learning about chemistry mixed with a bit of science fiction? Was it fun to watch me uh, beat up people using Superman character? And would you like to see more of these videos in the future? Thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye.